day in Maui. It's gorgeous today. So right behind me, we have the crushing spread, making this kind of like surge-like material. It's pretty chunky. And then the D10's right behind me, pushing it away from the stacker there for the sake of stockpiling. To explain what's going on behind us, Goodfellow is blasting out here, but they can't blast everything because it's not just straight rock. There is some dirt mixed in. Blasting doesn't work with anything but straight rock because you need to keep the energy within the rock. So instead, to handle the areas that they can't blast, they're using hammers, 470 excavators with big old hammers on them, breaking it into big chunks. Then that D9 behind me is pushing those big chunks towards this other 470 right there that then is feeding the crusher that is crushing the material, making the other types of products they need on site. And then the D10 we saw is pushing that crushed material out away from the piles to make additional room. So that's kind of a rough estimation explanation as far as what's going on with me. Today we are in Hawaii. How about it? My very first time in Hawaii for dirt for this. I was last year as a child. I've not been here for well over a decade. Very excited to just be here and see what the heck it takes to build in this environment. Extremely unique. We are with Goodfellow Bros, one of the premier contractors in the state of Hawaii. They've been here for many decades, very good at what they do. So we're gonna check out a few of their jobs today. I'm actually speaking at their event tomorrow. So I'm really excited to be with them for a few days here. Goodfellow, we've seen them in California. We have a vlog about that if you want to check it out right here. But the work they do is a lot different here than in California. California is big dirt. Out here, the jobs aren't big dirt. It's a lot smaller, a lot more urban, all different types of challenges. The job we're on today is a road widening project. You have a lot of traffic around Honolulu. This area has grown like crazy. There's tourism, there's the military all kinds of stuff going on. They need bigger roads to accommodate more cars. So right next to me is an existing two lane road, one lane in each direction. They're adding another two right where I'm standing. This area used to basically just slope off and adjoin to those houses down below us. That's all military housing. And now what they're doing and what they've done is they've built this retaining wall all the way along. And now they're backfilling, bringing this up to grade and they'll grade all of this off. Once the infrastructure is done, they'll pave it, and now these people will be able to get to wherever they need to go a heck of a lot faster. Okay, on a road construction project, a widening project like this, it's not about bulking material. Everything is deliberate. They've built this retaining wall behind me. They've got that into position. They still have to finish the top, but what they're doing right now is backfilling, bringing where I'm standing up to grade. So it'll be about three feet of backfill. They have trucks coming in right now, dumping all of this quarried material, this select fill right next to me. And then you have this excavator pulling from these piles. 
and placing it in roughly about a foot at a time. So they're called lifts. So that's a 12 inch lift. And then you have a crew behind there with a shovel to keep the, the material off the fabric so it's not tearing the fabric. A guy with a walk behind roller and then they're bringing in a bigger roller behind it to then as it starts to get a little wider they'll bring in that bigger roller to be a little bit more efficient so they'll layer this material compact put another layer compact put another layer compact so that when you build a road on top of this it's not settling over time which is obviously detrimental to that road All right, so behind me is an example of the retaining wall getting formed up. So we saw the retaining wall getting backfilled there, but this is what it looked like originally before that material started to get placed. So that is roughly what the existing grade was. And then it just kind of came up here to meet that road. Now, because they're pushing the road out, they need that retaining wall to hold that material to create that entire new surface for this new two lane road. To build this, they'll excavate that footing area out. They'll pour the footing. From the footing will come some rebar all the way down. They'll tie into that rebar. They'll put a rebar cage all the way across, all the way to the top that you can see the exposed top there. They'll put these reusable forms up against both sides. They'll pour the concrete in between. They'll let it cure. And then they'll come through, strip these forms back, leaving that concrete retaining wall that then can get backfilled. So all of this will be stripped today. And then like the crew we just saw, will come in and start lift after lift after lift until it's backfilled to the same grade that I'm standing on right now. This is an ideal machine for this kind of scenario. As you can tell, if you look very closely, there's not a lot of work area here. That's where a, a machine like this, or the deer we saw down there, that reduced tail swing, zero tail swing, is extraordinarily valuable. As he's spinning, you can see that counterweight is not sticking out very far from the tracks. So wherever the tracks are, that's where the machine can go. Conventional excavator would be swinging out and you could be swinging into things on either side which can cause not just equipment damage but also damage to whatever you're building or existing utility lines, whatever that is. So these machines, extraordinarily helpful in this scenario. And you can tell this machine and the last machine had Trimble GPS on it. So that operator knows exactly where this grade needs to be up against that retaining wall. I would be doing more right now, but this lens, I dropped it while in Alberta. Two weeks ago, and there was something inside that was loose, but it was working still in Alberta the whole time. I put it on this morning, not working anymore. So, now I only have my more zoomier lens, which is not very helpful in a job set like this. All right, we're about to head to another job. And sorry if I'm not so excited and energetic this morning. I am jet lagged as I'll get out. Before I leave this job though, we have a CAT 336 about to lift some of this formwork, strip the formwork from concrete retaining wall that was poured maybe a week ago or so. So they're gonna remove this formwork, stack it up, haul it to another area where it'll be reused on the job.
this is site two. This is the main water treatment facility for essentially the entire city of Honolulu. The water right now, it gets processed with the existing wastewater treatment facility and it's discharged into the ocean. Now they've had issues with the quality of the water going into the ocean. So to make sure that water is pure, water is good to go into the ocean without causing any issues, they're doing this extension right behind me. So this is essentially all of the water that's already been treated goes into what this will be to do the final polishing before it's eventually discharged into the ocean. So Goodfellow, the general contractor's here to do most of the work. Goodfellow is a subcontractor. Goodfellow is doing the site and civil scope. So they've excavated whatever is behind me. They're doing a lot of the pipe. They're doing anything civil related. And then the general contractor is doing everything else. digging through here in normal conditions, they'd be hitting water just a few feet down, it'd be falling in, it'd be a total mess, just total slop. But you can see, he's digging through here, it's clean, the walls are holding up, no problem, and that's because it's been soil mixed. So they've come in here with a mixer, they've drilled in, and they've essentially mixed the existing dirt with concrete, and then they have dewatering as well, so that all of this has been treated. And it's not just dirt, it's dirt mixed with concrete, which then dries it out, hardens it up, and creates really, really solid digging conditions. You can, you can smell it too. Yeah. We're, we're just a few feet below essentially grade, this is where the water is for this entire area because the ocean is right there. We're right in the harbor area. The water is not very far away. So to build a solid foundation to put this box culvert they're laying behind me on, what they've done is they've jet grouted every eight feet. They've come through here, they've excavated it. They've put filter fabric down. They've put rock down. Then they've put this geogrid in a few different layers combined with the rock down. And what this does is essentially disperses the weight across evenly across that rock to, to create a really nice foundation. And then on top of two layers of geogrid and fabric, you'll put additional rock, additional fabric, and then your bedding material, which is what your... Okay. Make sure I go over my stuff. You are Angel White. Aaron and Aaron, Angel. Aaron Witt. Yes. Bringing her home. <laughs> 